In the realm of ancient gods, a Sumerian king of extraordinary stature named Gilgamesh ruled the grand city of Uruk, in Mesopotamia. This city was adorned with splendid ziggurat temples, fortified by towering walls, and enriched with exotic fruit orchards. Gilgamesh, however, was no ordinary king. He was a demigod, born of the priest king Lugalbanda and the goddess Ninsun, possessing unparalleled beauty and strength that set him apart from mere mortals. Despite his divine lineage and extended lifespan, Gilgamesh was not immune to mortality. His physical prowess was overshadowed by his arrogance. He ruled with an iron fist, demanding adulation from his subjects and commissioning monuments in his honor. His lust knew no bounds, claiming any woman who caught his eye, regardless of her status or marital ties. His tyranny sparked resentment among his people, who pleaded with the gods for salvation from his oppressive rule. Their prayers reached the celestial god Anu, who commanded the goddess of vegetation, Aruru, to create a rival for Gilgamesh. Using a piece of clay, Aruru crafted a hybrid creature, part man, part animal, named Enkidu. With a primitive appearance, complete with a hairy body and bull's horns, Enkidu lived among the animals in the Sumerian wilderness, eating grass and drinking from rivers alongside them. Despite his protective nature towards wildlife, Enkidu lacked the understanding to interact with humans. Upon hearing tales of a formidable man-beast, Gilgamesh dispatched the priestess Shamhat from the temple of Uruk to investigate and seduce this enigmatic creature. The goal was to strip Enkidu of his purity, bestowed upon him by the goddess. To Shamhat's surprise, Enkidu was as impressive as Gilgamesh, and she quickly fell for him. After a week of passionate love, Enkidu was transformed. He learned to dress and eat like a human, and Shamhat informed him about Gilgamesh's tyrannical reign. A grand wedding was underway in Uruk, but as was his custom, Gilgamesh appeared, intending to claim the bride before her wedding. To the relief of the bride and groom, Enkidu emerged from the crowd. Guided to the city by Shamhat, Enkidu confronted Gilgamesh about his disrespect for the sanctity of marriage. For the first time, Gilgamesh encountered someone who dared to challenge him. This sparked a heated argument between the two, which quickly escalated into a physical confrontation. The epic battle between the two demigods raged on for seven days, causing significant damage to the city. Each blow they landed could have slain five human warriors, yet neither yielded. Inevitably, they began to admire each other. Gilgamesh finally landed a clean blow, knocking Enkidu down. But instead of finishing him off, Gilgamesh extended a hand, helping Enkidu to his feet. They embraced, marking the beginning of an eternal friendship. From that day forward, Gilgamesh became a more just king, ceasing his torment of his people. In the years that followed, Gilgamesh and Enkidu embarked on numerous adventures, defeating various monsters and heroes. However, the thought of their impending mortality loomed over Gilgamesh. To immortalize their names, Gilgamesh proposed a journey to the cedar forest, home to the fearsome demon Humbaba. Despite Humbaba's lack of provocation, he was forced to defend himself against his attackers. The sight of the demon struck fear into the hearts of the demigods, but they mustered the courage to attack. After several attempts, they managed to slay Humbaba. Despite their victory, Humbaba's death angered the gods. Still, Gilgamesh and Enkidu returned to Uruk, planning to celebrate their feat however, their celebration was interrupted by an unexpected guest. Ishtar, the goddess of love, beauty, war, and fertility, was captivated by Gilgamesh's charm and strength and sought to make him her lover. Despite her allure, Ishtar failed to seduce Gilgamesh. He rejected her, aware of the tragic fates of her previous lovers. Infuriated by his audacity, Ishtar swore revenge. Ishtar pleaded with her father, the celestial god Anu, to send the most formidable creature, the Bull of Heaven, to kill Gilgamesh and Enkidu. The bull descended from heaven, bringing with it seven years of famine and natural disasters. The people of Uruk implored Gilgamesh and Enkidu to slay the celestial beast. The ensuing battle between the two demigods and the divine bull shook all of Mesopotamia. Using the same weapons they used to defeat Humbaba, they killed the bull of heaven. In a show of defiance, Gilgamesh severed one of the bull's legs and hurled it at Ishtar's feet. Not only was Ishtar enraged, but the other gods also rebelled against Gilgamesh and Enkidu, deciding to punish them. After deliberating, the gods decreed that Enkidu must die, as he was the one who held the bull of heaven by the horns, allowing Gilgamesh to deliver the final blow. Soon after, Enkidu fell gravely ill. Seeing his best friend in such a state, Gilgamesh became desperate, seeking the best doctors in the kingdom to find a cure, but to no avail. Enkidu died in agony in Gilgamesh's arms, and Gilgamesh mourned his loss bitterly. Enkidu's death instilled a fear of mortality in Gilgamesh. He embarked on a quest for the secret of immortality and a way to resurrect Enkidu. He journeyed through mountains and deserts, hoping to find Utnapishtim, the man who survived the Great Flood and was granted immortality by the gods. With the help of the boatman or Shinabi, Gilgamesh crossed a vast lake of poisonous waters, finally reaching Utnapishtim's abode. 
To Gilgamesh's disappointment, Utnapishtim explained that only the gods could grant eternal life. However, there was a miraculous plant at the bottom of the sea that could rejuvenate whoever ate it, prolonging their lifespan. Gilgamesh dived into the sea and found the plant. But while he bathed to purify himself from the long journey, a common snake, attracted by the plant's sweet smell, devoured it. When Gilgamesh realized what had happened, it was too late. He found the snake's shed skin, indicating that the animal had rejuvenated. Gilgamesh concluded that no man, no matter how strong or wealthy, can defeat death. He accepted his fate and returned to Uruk. For the first time, he noticed the magnificence and endurance of his city. His legacy as a good king would be the closest thing to immortality he could achieve. Gilgamesh decided to inscribe his story on clay tablets, forever immortalizing his name, his friend Enkidu, and their great adventures.